It's great to be alive. It's great to be alive. I don't know if it caught that. I don't really care. But anywho, I'm sitting back. It's like 3 a.m. And I'm thinking about the metaphysical, esoteric concept of Jesus. As well as in the manifestation of the physical. So, as we go and we get into the concept of like being really truly perfect or how someone so perfect could exist you know if you will right so i started pondering deep into what makes us the way we are and it's the world around us and our environments that really mold our character and complete, you know, ethical, moral, you know, wherever the compass is going, however you want to put these words together inside your brain, you know, of what you want to title these things as, these, you know, the righteous or the unrighteous, the good, the bad, you know, you know, love, hate, you know, these things are all there together. And I'm inside myself and I'm thinking, you know, should we love everybody? Does everybody really deserve love? And it's like, well, yeah. Because, you, you know, there's a risky line here of where you can love the wrong people, you know. I mean, I've been wronged a lot. Does that make me hate the people that have wronged me? And so it's like, no, not at all. I don't hate them. In fact, I love them so much. That was the only reason why they had the ability to hurt me. And so as I ponder going all the way back into the era of like when Jesus had walked this earth and was confronting everybody, and it made me think about the pain and the indoctrination that we all go through and you know in our lives even people that have it all are still in pain you know and, and and people that have nothing are in pain and we're all in fear that someone's trying to take something from us so we're all like running from each other or trying to get one over on each other because of this fear of loss or a fear of something it's not even there it's all an illusion and it's really inside. But when you go inside, you realize it's the child. And so then then it's like, well, so what? You don't think that people were born evil? No, I don't. I think they truly made evil. I think truly the environment that we're living in is what actually molds the, the, the metaphysiological and the entire um, ethical and then, you know, what is right, what the, the balance, it, it all starts from the parents and then the institutions around us, you know, schools, school systems, uh, so-called churches. I mean, they say it takes a village to raise a child, okay? You know, but if you notice a lot of parents today, they let, a tablet or a TV or something other than them taking the accountability of actually doing it. They feel that they're being better parents already um, by not being a part of their life and any kind of guidance at all than being there. And there has to be a level of, I don't even, I, I think discipline needs to be something as simple as making somebody self-reflect on themselves of all their actions that they've done by writing them down. I want you to sit down, get a piece of paper, and write down exactly what you've done to me or what you did to them or how did this happen. You know, arduous hours of timeouts, taking away people's stuff, it's obviously not effective. Um, what worked for me was sitting down and being forced to write out definitions of like things like respect over and over and over again until as soon as I felt like, you know, 
Can I please stop? My... Nah, you know what? Go back out there and keep writing. You know? Until, you know, sometimes it'd be a couple days of writing the same thing over and over again. But eventually you get it. And it's better than getting your ass handed to you. But I'm not going to lie, I dealt with a lot of child abuse. But not, you know, from my mom per se. But anyway, it's irrelevant. The point that I'm trying to make is that in our life, it's really how did the child get made? And then if you take the scripture itself and consistently put that into the heart of the child as the kid is growing, maybe that is the idea of what a perfect child would be. I could be wrong. I mean, because truly the, the, the Bible is being taken as this book that is... It's there. You're looking. A lot of people are looking at it too literally. Too literally. Is it all? Yes, it did happen. Did Jesus Christ live? I have found massive amounts of information that have proved that his existence is real. Okay. In fact, we're living in the only time now of where we're finally living in a time where they're saying he never existed. That is amazing to me. Because that's prophecy. And prophecy is basically the Bible manifesting into reality. It's unbelievable. No matter who I think I am or what I have to do for myself or how much money I can make or whoever I'm going to be, there's a bigger all picture going on here. And we're all serving our part in it. Okay? God's got a way bigger plan. It's Are you jumping on, on board of God's plan? Or are you always just trying to make your own plan? Now, I'm on God's plan, all right? It makes me just look at the inner child. Get in touch with your inner child. Um, I realize I tell people a lot, go somewhere else. Go find some information somewhere else. Well, the best teachers will always send you back in yourself. They'll plant that seed. Inner child, go check that out. And then you be like, boop. Oh, what was that? Oh, no way. Gold nuggets. Yes. And then you go and then next you know, your library's, you know, building and you're, you're creating this gigantic plethora inside yourself. If I gave you all the answers, it wouldn't even matter. You probably wouldn't even believe me. I'd probably get criticized or all these things. You'd immediately, you know, go find these things out for yourself. And then that way you'll come back. You'll, you'll digest it. The truth will make you mad and then it'll set you free. How's it, Doc? You know, so the truth is, is like, man, you know, if you're going to live your life in harmony and in peace, it, you, you have to find it first inside yourself. Who are you? And then once you figure that out, then everything else will transpire and manifest into the reality of what you feel is good. But it has to be like a part of the big plan to be really fruitful. That's why I always try to think, hmm. You know, I want to invent something for somebody, for the world, but it will, they weaponize it. That If you notice, nothing exists if it can't be used as a weapon. Even your phone itself is used as a weapon. I'm not joking. Before it was given to you, it was a weapon, okay? So that means that everything in life needs to serve a dualistic per principle. Vehicles, man, amazing things, but that's literally, like, you can just, you know... Lines? What lines? <laughs> it just starts sailing through. It's a very dangerous vehicle, you know, or automobile or motor vehicle, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, motor carriage. You know, the point is, is that if, if you <laughs> interpret the actual vehicle itself, it can be used as a weapon, but it's, it, it, it serves miracles every day. And so that's the reality of life. Kamikazes, they're real. You know what I mean? Uh, Self-sacrifices. The truth is, is that the point of my video and all these things is like, listen to all the things that are coming out of me. This is all from the inner child that I've packed in, collected, absorbed, sponged. Is it healthy? Is it good? Who are we? 
who are we really creating in a society when we're consistently propagating so much information into us some a lot of it's not healthy it's not healthy stuff and um what made me start this is because i knew that we actually manifest our reality and so i got away from the conspiracy theory stuff but everybody else is still plugged in so they're actually creating that reality as much as i could walk away from it it's sticky it's like where are you going and then it tries to pull you right back in and, and you're not going anywhere because the reality is is that you have cnn and your makeshift bullshit political paradigm that you vote for every day and be like yes these people they're looking out for me oh by golly yes ma'am and sir and then you've got the truth that they're out there actually trying to you know uh, take out other countries and steal people's sovereignty and are really actually truly okay the, the three city states you've got inner city london which is the monopolization of the centralized banking of the entire world you have in uh, washington district of columbia which is the military for those banks and as well as the vatican it's the truth these three city states, these three city empire states are actually trying to dominate the whole entire world, which was the old world back in the day. And in order for America to be on the map, I mean, look at study what the petrodollar did and how we use the military industrial complex to become as powerful as we are. You know, that United States is very vastly spoken when it comes to you know, the means in the geopolitical arena we're in. And it's only because we're backed up by bankers to to use the military that we have. So if the people that vote for these people, okay, see the other side of the coin to be true, then the government that they voted for will take them out too, okay? Because... Just as afraid as we are, the people, as the government, the government's afraid of you too. They bought billions of hollow point rounds and they've already ended the war in Afghanistan. Why are they buying all these guns and all these things? The point that I was making was I realized that we manifest our reality and um, there's a polarity on the chessboard the grand chessboard and you have the people that are asleep and believe the the government has their best interests and are amazing. And you know what? The government does do a lot of amazing things. Isn't it amazing how they really do? They've got a lot of plausible deniability, but then you have the other arena of where they actually go out there and take lives, take people's resources, justify murder and when it all comes out and is said and done, it's 60, 70 years later when they finally decide to give you the information. And it's like a whatever, who cares? The only people that care about it are the people that went through it. And then they, it don't matter anymore because it didn't affect the people in front of you. They don't care. Like right now is the time of content. Right now is right now. So if you're watching this, this only pertains to you right now, connecting pieces and affirmation and all these things. And as you get older or wherever, you could be older, as you get to wherever you're going in your life, you're going to maybe want to be able to share this information. It might actually affect them in a different way than what you wanted it to. It was really just for you. That's what's sad, all right? So the people that are in control of the collective consciousness of our entire widespread reality of the conformity or the the overall collective consciousness of our entire society and how everybody is harnessed to believe yes this is true they're in control of the majority vote that is sad that is sad because just the fact that you even believe Trump is going to save anything has already proved the point. It doesn't matter if you're going to vote for this person or this person. 
the whole thing's fixed. They, it's a separate nation within a nation. Okay? It's the truth. So, when you, you know, um, not spread your allegiance, but pay your allegiance or your homage to the United States of America and to the allegiance of the United States of America, you're actually paying your allegiance to a country that was established in 1871, a 10 mile by 10 mile long radius that is actually separate in Virginia and it actually belongs to London. It's, that's why they said during the Emancipation Proclamation, they're like, oh, okay, well, we're foreigners, we'll be United States citizens, and we'll get everybody else to, too. And we'll get these two separate countries to stick together, the Union, the actual uh, Confederacy, or the Union States, or the original colonies, if you will, okay, that then became territories. And then you had... Uh, and when we were becoming bankrupt and needed collateralization of the land to the Euro European bankers, when uh, Abraham Lincoln was getting into office, we had all these debts and all these things that we owed to them anyways to start the country. And it was a 70-year note, a 70-year debt. And so, anywho, moving forward, uh, they created the federal government, collateralized the property and all the national monuments and all the major parts of American lands are now under federal territory. Isn't that kind of coincidental? Hmm. So this is also what they did. Like, so let's say I own some slaves, which, you know, technically would be like the equivalency, no offense to anybody watching, as John Deere tractors, their property basically lawnmowers and weed whackers and sickles and all these things. And so um, they looked at that as property by the United States government. And so they, and they actually want to fight for the rights and civil liberties of uh, slaves so that they could actually create them into U S citizens and make them their property not no longer that you could have your own property and then used them to create the very nation that we live in like so banks came in and they were like oh okay you know you have these great ideas we're going to lend you money okay with interest uh, but we want to be a part of your infrastructure and everything's going to basically be ours. And so what they do is they lend you all the money and then buy up all the land and, and own basically all the infrastructure around you. And they lend you all the money to build it. And then what? You want me to go away? No way. I'm going to start dictating some laws now. I got some policies that I'd like to enforce. And I got some things. I got some good ideas. Yes. Yes. Well, now they don't need us anymore because if you look around us, Bob, you know, there's a lot of people that need jobs. And when you go into a job today, they used to, you can get an eight hour paycheck, you know, an eight hour a day check every single, I mean, man, 40 hours a week was like no problem. Okay. So now, you know, you're lucky if you get 20 hours a week. Okay. You got to get three to four jobs. All right. That's just typical out there right now. I'm telling you, go apply anywhere. Right. Okay. So, what we're staring at is a country that already has enough people. Uh, it's already self-sustained. They don't really need you. It's it's like a prison. It's like a it's like a big giant concentration camp or a reservation, you know, a Native American reservation, being limited, no rights. No, you know, uh, if you go to jail, uh, the prisoners clean up the trash. They're the ones that cook the food. They're the ones that are serving everything. All the guards do, just make sure they just stand there and, you know, break up fights after the fights that mostly, you know what I mean? I'm letting you know what's really going on. Okay? So, we live in a really strange place where if people woke up to the inner child inside them and realized that we're all in pain and if we filled ourselves with better words, with more righteousness, and also knew the truth about the past and the, the, the actual origin of all this and what the purpose is. Because no matter what, you think, you know, there's, uh, 
you know, a beginning and an end. Well, it's just a big circle. And eventually we're going to get right back to the beginning, of the, which is the end. And then just go back out again. And then just keep going back in again. It's going to be like that. That's how it's going to be. But... It says that eventually it'll just be just true harmony on the on the earth as we go in. And now this is going into the occult phases of the ages, and the eons, and going to the equinoxes, depending on what you believe in. A heliocentric form of the earth would be those equinoxes, but yet on the other uh, paradigm of it, of the dome earth, okay, it would just still be uh, the same aspect of um, you know, going on the level of time doesn't exist. We're living in the here and now only. Uh, there is no yesterday. There is no tomorrow. There only is right now. And everything has been a collection of ideas and thoughts to get you locked into the idea of yesterday and then a presumption of tomorrow on a calendar. So now you're forever locked in a day. And then because of pictures and all these collections of events in our life, we have attachments. So then we suffer loss. So then we suffer. We, we have want, pleasure. Pleasure leads to wanting, desire leads to these things that are called sufferations. Because pleasure itself leads to wanting more pleasure. And so if you can't be happy in a state of just being, then you'll never be happy ever. Never with yourself, never with anything, never with anyone and simply just being like, wow, thank you. So, yeah, back on the idea of time. Time is only existing to those who observe it. So, it's a measurement of thought, but yet can only exist based off observation itself. So, it really, truly only exists the moment that you observe it or bring it up or however you can compute it, you know, you know, absorb the information, compute it, and then push it back out. Because um, let's think about the concept of an idea. So you have an idea and it comes to mind. Let's first imagine the world not as it is. It's not been constructed yet. Or it's been constructed, but an individual just had an idea saying, you know, it'd be really cool, cell phones, and talking to people through cell phones. And then so all of a sudden, he has to use the idea of it. It was years ago people talked about actually doing what we're doing right now. But they thought those people were crazy. Well, look at all the time and all the thought and imagination it took into people actually making it a reality. So thought is really the moment and origin and genesis of creation. It really truly is. And then the measurement of it is how far and how long it takes to transpire into creation itself. Whether you got the material, the opportunity, the money, the finances, the backup, the friends, the networks, the uh, we we're talking about a chain of events that have to take place. You know, I mean, just the the uh, idea of manufacturing alone and assembly, and then ideas of putting pieces together, and then figuring out how we're going to actually package it, model it, sell it. Uh, how do we get the uh, the the people to absorb the product, etc. Moving forward, thinking that, my friend, is time. But yet, to be honest with you, truth also is wrapped up in that as well. So, in the end of all things, you're a timekeeper. Right now, I'm 24 minutes and 51 seconds in, locking myself in time. 
And I only age by the observation of time. I age by my environment, one, two, how I observe myself, the pain that I uh, um, uh, basically tenaciously absorb to. You know, it's mine. It's, you know, all my desires, all these things. Being stuck in moments of particular things, uh, frames of minds, beliefs and perceptions, these are all things that get you trapped in ideas of time that actually kill you. Because death is, well, that's another thought and theory, man. I thought that's another one, too. That's a deep one, death. Nothing can attach itself to you if it's already not inside you. So death will attach itself to you, but it's also a part of our our fall, our 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 consistency of being created and fallen in sin. It'll it'll never go away. Not until we pass over and transcend from this position here into the next based off the accomplishments of Jesus Christ. See, if time really existed, then there would be a time frame between God and the devil and Jesus and all these things. See, we don't know that time. Remember what he says in the Bible, no man will know the day. No man will know the hour. Because there is the, the day, the Lord stays every day. Because there's no such thing as time. So one day, in the grand scheme of things, okay, you're going to realize it. And everybody's going to realize it through their cipher of events of their cycle on their meat suit ride, whether it's 36 years, whatever. However, whatever God it is that resonates with you, mine's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. He on flesh in earth walked this mofro. That's why I know everything I know is because of him. I give all credit to him. So that to me, for me, and should be, you know, for the world, they say, is Jesus Christ. So everybody will have to recycle themselves no matter what until they figure it out to go on to the next journey if they choose. And that's what I ultimately find out even through Akashic records and going deeper into the synapses of uh, and the dichotomies and the, uh, the the literature of our life is basically that we are just in a human experience joy ride to find out what life is love experience uh, God wants to experience life through us Okay, but he wants us to lean on him and have love and faith in him the whole entire way going through. Okay, and, and to then see that prosperity in that heavenly kingdom all around us and not lean on the world or other people. He wants us to lean truly on him. And so I'm looking at the time and we're almost out. But um, I just wanted to basically say that so the purpose of our life is to basically uh, correct all the karmic curses and generational curses that not only came with our family because they're evident in them, they'll be evident in us. Correct them through you, then they'll be paid forward through the examples under your children and everybody else, which will clean up your life. It'll get, clean up a complete better legacy and it'll make your life a better, you know. And by the way, this is a documentation not only just for you, but also for myself. So... Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video to be useful, entertaining, awesome, something that actually just hits you right at home, right where you are, please give me a thumbs up. You know, I don't really care if you share it. Um, you know, subscribe, whatever. I love you guys. That is the truth because that's what I find motivates me to want to make people aware of government conspiracies, um, actual real events and scandals that they have done and that they were behind religion, scandals, murders, genocides, all these things. They're my motive of why I wanted to let everybody know these things was because of love. And that alone is a lot. I love everybody. God bless you. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks. I know I took up 30 minutes of your time. It's like a whole entire Seinfeld episode. God bless you.